Dr. Elizabeth Hafer wants you to get your head on straight. In a world gone sideways, having balance and integrity in all areas of life leads to having confidence that breeds clarity. Clarity is essential to living an authentic life, and all the information shared on the Get Your Head On Straight podcast is designed to inspire you to live your life fulfilled. Enjoy the show. Welcome to Get Your Head On Straight with Dr. Elizabeth Hafer. I'm excited about my guest today. He has an incredible story to tell about his journey with Blair Upper Cervical Chiropractic. And without further ado, I'd like to welcome Dr. Max Gooing to the show. Oh, thank you so much, Dr. Hafer. I really appreciate you having me on this morning and give me the opportunity to share my story with everyone. Absolutely. So I am really proud of you because you were an intern in my office officially for a year, but unofficially, I kind of walked through the entire journey of chiropractic school with you because I had the most incredible fortune to take care of you before you even started chiropractic school. So give me a little understanding about where you were when we met, what was going on, and where you are now. Okay. Well, I think there's probably two facets to that. I mean, one, professionally, chiropractic-wise, and just healthcare provider. And then more importantly, what you provided for me as a provider, which was the Blair Correction, which was amazing. I, before I met you, had been, I think it had been a year and a half at that time, suffering from chronic dizziness that turned into depression and anxiety for myself that became uncontrollable. I was unable to be myself still. I couldn't find ways to go outside of the house comfortably. I couldn't stand for periods of time. I felt like I had constant panic attacks, all these that coalesce into issues of going to class, being with friends, being with family. And so that was my main issue before coming into you. And then you corrected that for me, of course, we could talk more about that. But the other side was developing myself as a young professional. You were kind of the the final key for myself to move into the profession of chiropractic. I mean, my dad is a chiropractor and I love the profession and it has definitely influenced myself as well. But seeing the different options that are out there within a singular profession, such as chiropractic, I think that was really the turning point, especially seeing how much it could greatly affect myself. Wow. So what you're saying is, you had some symptoms that even though you were under traditional regular chiropractic care, you really weren't getting eased from. Right, right. The, exactly. And what's so remarkable about that is I'm really good friends with your dad, Dr. Tim Gooing. Mm-hmm. He's an amazing human. And he actually you know, said, hey, I think Dr. Hafer can help my son. So there's like three stories within this story. It's like interprofessional collaboration being able to know when the skills you have don't match what the patient you have it is in need of. Then you said that the reason you decided to go into chiropractic was kind of like this Blair correction and the mentorship of professional training. So this is a really cool story to unpack. <laughs> so many facets. <laughs> yeah, I remember meeting you at the Cal Cairo conference in San Diego and I think it was in 2016. Yeah. So we're going on five years, which is really exciting. I didn't even think about that until this moment. That's crazy. Yeah, we've got a whole hand going now. I'm excited. Absolutely. (laughs) So I remember I did a quick leg check on you at the hotel. I was like, yeah, you've got some stuff going on in your upper cervical spine. Why don't you come in? We'll do an exam, take some imaging and see what happens. So walk me through what you've experienced since getting your first Blair upper cervical correction. Okay, what I've experienced. So man, it feels like years ago that I had my first intense retake tracing. That was probably the most unique thing with the correction. Actually, before I get into that, the most interesting part for me is when you did the first correction, you said to me that I might feel really dizzy or I might feel really tired or just I might feel really just like heavy after the first correction just because you know your body instantly goes into a healing state. And I one felt extremely tired right after the correction. But the biggest thing that I remember is that I got my stability that I had been lost. I lost for about a year and a half right then and there on the table again. And I remember going back to the resting room and actually started crying because I thought that I'd never had that back. And so that was probably the biggest thing for me. And I noticed that I could walk around and just live life with more stability, less instances of panic and anxiety and dizziness spells. And so that was totally good. And it was interesting when you would predict the retracing intervals that it would happen, be intense, but then also dissipate quickly. 
with mm-hmm. just supportive care without ever readjusting the neck. Right. So this coming June, you'll have held your first adjustment for five years. What yeah. a what a thing to think about. <laughs> it's so incredible. And mm-hmm. that's the beauty behind like the upper cervical work. If you get it and set it and leave it alone, it's like, a, <laughs> what is it? Like a dehydrator, set it and forget it. <laughs> <Yeah>. Literally, right? <laughs> That's what it is. Exactly. And then you start to heal and then you go through these cycles. And because we understand physiology and epigenetics and how normal physiology is supposed to work, we can tell patients in advance during these specific periods of time, you're going to experience old manifestation of the things that you walked in the door with. And so if we can educate people on the fact that their body is healing and it's a normal process, then it takes that fear and that anxiety out of it. And they're like, oh my goodness, Dr. Hafer said this was going to happen. I'm not scared. I'm thankful. Exactly. Giving them the preparation for it and the fact that you know it's coming gives speaks volumes to how well-versed you are in the technique. Well, and not only that, but just it helps to ease the confusion or the fear surrounding, oh my gosh, because I know like for me, whenever I've had symptoms in the past of something and it was something that triggered almost like a PTSD response, like, is this ever going to end? Am I going back down a bad path? When I educate people about retracing, they they feel confident knowing that their body is working and they celebrate it and they actually listen more, not to me, but to their body. Their body will tell them today's probably not a good day to do some deadlifts, you know, and then they just don't and then they get through it. And then three days later, they're back to doing powerhouse weightlifting. So Which I think is important with the actual technique. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt. Um, right. It just learn to like learn to read your body. And I think that's the important thing about the retracing because healing is a whole process and it doesn't happen instantaneously. So you have to work with the ebbs and flows of the healing process. Right on. So once you had your correction and I never even knew this is the first time I'm hearing that you actually teared up because you never thought you'd get your stability back. So honestly, that's like such a gift for me to know that instantaneously you had that profound moment and it's been carrying on all these years. But after your correction, you were kind of deciding what you wanted to do. You were finishing up undergrad and you were like, what's my next step? Right, exactly. Because that was 2016 and I graduated March, 2017. So that was about another year. And yeah, I was torn between a lot of healthcare professions, but bottom line was that more I saw of what you could provide in chiropractic, what my dad could provide in chiropractic. All of these did help. But the final uh, teetering factor that led me into chiropractic was the fact that my life was changed with a non-medical approach in a way that I could have never imagined. And I decided if I could provide a similar relief to other people in my life, then I would be living my life with purpose. And that is what I felt. And so basically what you provided for me was the deciding factor that chiropractic is just what I want to provide for others. That is so wonderful. And then just being able to take you from patient to chiropractic student to now doctor, I, I'm so proud of you and everything oh, that you've you. done. And talk to me about that experience going through chiropractic school, knowing that the upper cervical is a major factor in stability and health and, and healing. Exactly. The thing with chiropractic is there's so many varying opinions, right? And everyone wants to say this, everyone wants to say that. And I think it's so important to keep perspective on what everyone provides and knowing the specificity and effectiveness of upper cervical care going through early on kind of helped shape me what my focus was early on. I've always wanted to focus on the neck and find ways to help people very specifically in the neck because it is such a delicate neurological region. Going through school, it helped me to shape my focus, I would say, if that helps, because what you provide is a very gentle, I would say non-invasive actually way of approaching the neck that leads to long-term stability because I mean we could get into a whole conversation of adjusting and all that kind of stuff but you want the joint to hold otherwise it'll start to just slide in place it'll just not be where it needs to be so yeah. convoluted answer early on it just helped me to really want to focus on ways that I could provide that I love that so then we got to be intern doctor together for a year yeah I know, the actual solid year. I love that. Yeah. And now you've graduated. You are about to take your exam to get licensed in the state of California. And probably in the next couple of months, you're going to be providing care. I am still shocked by that. And I just want to reiterate on a recording how grateful I am for all of your influence. This last year in particular, and just everything, you wrote my letter of recommendation. 
me help my way through school. And I don't think, I know actually my last year of interning and learning clinical skills would not have been the same without you. So I really Aww. appreciate it. Well, hey, it's my pleasure. And it's so neat to get to see, like I said, from patient to doctor, the transformation that's occurred. <laughs> and I feel like because my life was given back to me all those years ago, because of a blare upper cervical correction, it's the least I could do to pour into future generations of chiropractic. Because you know what? Someday my great grandkids are going to need a Blair doctor. Yeah. <laughs> right. So you're investing in your own future. Literally. I'm sewing into the future of my family's health because it's that important. It is. It really is that important. So now where are you at? What are you up to? What's going on? Oh my gosh. I am just, like you said, waiting for my exam. So I am so excited to be on the brink of joining a actual profession in which I can be a doctor providing patients with healthcare. So, you know, at the moment, I'm just keeping in touch with you and I'm setting up marketing plans and I'm figuring out how I want to practice. So it's a fun kind of unknown time in the early profession. Right. And do you feel like this COVID time or post COVID, if we're even in that yet, do you think that that's going to impact how you're going to interact, market, like, what does that look like? Because you've grown up in a chiropractic household. Your dad is an incredible chiropractor in Orange County. Yeah. He, oh, he's amazing. I love him. You know, it's been nice to be able to grow up with that influence so I can see how I want to apply that to my own life. But it is going to be interesting with COVID and I've already seen it being interesting because it's there's less in-person marketing for someone like myself on the fresher side. So kind of finding new ways to use social media to your advantage is something that I'm trying to be better at. I think that's a good thing to use. And then on top of that, in the future going forward, I really do see that a lot of patients, at least within my age group, have become accustomed to online marketing and sort of trusting online rather than in-person referrals or word of mouth, or if the word of mouth is word of mouth, it'll be through technology. So I, I think in general, the future is going to be very technical based, which is something that I'm still trying to learn. Well, I can assure everyone that Dr. Going is really good at it because he helps me <laughs> whenever he's <laughs> at the office. I'm like, Max, can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? Figure out how to do this, integrate that. And he's amazing. So I am so thrilled to have you as a colleague now. I'm so thrilled to be your colleague. That is so cool. Right down the road. And I fully expect to be taking care of people together. And the best part about training you is knowing that I've got a friend really literally right next door that if I need anything, I can say, hey, I need your help and you'll be right there and vice versa. Of course, you know that you can come anytime to get checked, to get help, to have questions answered. And I just want to change the idea that the profession is so divided. It doesn't have to be if we change our mindset about it. And recently in some coaching that I've been into, I've heard that it takes two. That's not true. It takes you. So if there's two people having a conversation and I decide that I want to be different and have a different relationship with that person, who's responsible for that? I am. So one chiropractor relationship at a time, my intention is to change the way that we communicate as a profession and unify each other, regardless of how we practice. Because at the end of the day, the bottom line is the person on the table who needs the care that we have to offer. Absolutely. Right. I think that's a great point to make because there's two points to that. One, the way that another chiropractor practices does not affect you in any mm -hmm. way. Number two, they're helping the patient. At the end of the day, that's what we do as chiropractors. And I think if we all understand that, there will be more cohesiveness within our community, less animosity. And yeah. we could be the ones that start that trend. Because Come I think on, that's an Dr. Important. Let's go. It. Let's do Ooh. it. All Let's right. All right. <laughs> Well, it's been a delightful conversation this morning with you, my friend. You too. I'm oh incredibly gosh. proud of everything you've done. I'm so excited to hear about the first day in practice for you. And you can call me for anything at any time. Same here. Thank you so much. And I wanted to say you'll be right down the road. I love that we can be friends and colleagues. And I know you'll always be there. So thank you again for everything. You're welcome. Keep you updated. <laughs> all right. All right. So thanks, everybody, for listening to Get Your Head On Straight with Dr. Elizabeth Hafer. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can always get a hold of me at my website, wellconnectedchiro.com. And we look forward to uh, talking on the next show. Take care. Bye, everyone. Thank you for listening to Get Your Head On Straight with Dr. Elizabeth Hafer. 
Visit wellconnectedchiro.com for more details from the show blog post and to learn what Blair Upper Cervical Chiropractic can do for you. To learn more about Dr. Hafer and her practice, you can find her at Well Connected Chiropractic in Mission Viejo, California by visiting wellconnectedchiro.com for more information.